Snowfish Productions. Chapter 5 Soul and the Man Purse. What are we supposed to be doing? Evie whispered. Soul glanced around the room and saw that most of the apprentices were going up the rough, wooden stairs to the middle floor of the guild. I don't know. Maybe we should just follow them. Hey! You shouldn't just be wandering around there. Chatot laughed at his own joke, causing Soul to roll her eyes. You two, follow me! Up the stairs into a room somewhat smaller than the one below it, the three stood in front of a bulletin board cluttered with papers. Soul could only stare uncomprehendedly. Are those footprints? Sure enough, a collection of varying footprints were sketched on the pages. They meant nothing to Soul, and she was left wondering what they were and what they meant. This is the job bulletin board, Chata announced. Pokemon from various regions post job requests here. You're aware that bad Pokemon are cropping up in greater numbers, right? Yup, Eevee answered. Because the flow of time is getting messed up. It's wreaking havoc, right? Which is why lots of bad Pokemon are appearing. What? Time is getting messed up? What does that even mean? And how is that possible? Well, aren't you well informed? Chatot said in a tone one would use to praise a pet that performed an amusing trick. Time getting out of whack has caused an outbreak of bad Pokemon. Perhaps because of that, we have seen an increase in the number of jobs. So, let's look for a job that you should perform. Chatot quickly scanned the requests and plucked down a page. Ah, yes! Maybe this will do? Chatot handed the paper to Sol, who immediately passed it on to Evie. They both gave her an odd look, but she offered no explanation. Okay, I'll read it, Evie said. Hello, my name is Spoink. An outlaw has run off with my most prized possession, my precious pearl. That pearl is life itself to me. I just can't seem to settle down if that pearl isn't in its proper place atop my head. But I've heard my pearl has been sighted. It's said to be in drenched bluff, but the bluff is reported to be extremely unsafe. I could never go somewhere so frightening. Oh, friendly readers, would you be so kind as to go to the bluff and get my pearl? I beg your exploration team members. Wait a second, Evie said after he finished reading the request. We're going to fetch an item that someone dropped? It's important you rookies pay your dues, Chatot snapped. I suggest you get on with the job. With that, Chatot marched off back down the stairs. Ugh, I can't believe we're stuck doing this pointless job, Evie complained. We're an exploration team. We should be exploring lost places and finding ancient treasure, not fetching random items. Evie, what would you have done if I refused to help you find your lost item? This pearl is probably as important to Spoink as your relic fragment is to you. Evie blinked once, then shame swept across his features. Oh, it probably isn't fair for me to think that, is it? Exploration teams are supposed to help people too. And I suppose that's what we'll be doing. Sorry for the crummy attitude. No need. You're just excited to be on a team, which is understandable. Come on then, we have a job to do. They climbed down the stairs to the topmost floor of the guild and walked down to the crossroads. Sol knew that the south path led to the beach. North was back to the guild and she could see buildings down the path to the west. Evie led them down the eastern path pulling a scroll from his ever-present bag. They stopped at the side of the road. With the crinkle of paper, Evie unrolled the scroll to reveal a map worn from use. 
It was detailed and colored, a legend in the bottom corner featuring neatly drawn footprints. How many hours has Evie spent poring over this map and planning explorations and adventures he never found the courage to follow through with? Now we're here, Evie said, pointing to a spot in the center near the left edge. And we need to go here. He lightly tapped a spot slightly to the northeast. It's pretty close, so it shouldn't take us that long to get there. He rolled up the map and placed it in his bag. They continued down the path at a leisurely pace. It was a beautiful morning. The sky was clear, sapphire blue. The trees and grass lining the dirt path a bright emerald green. The vibrancy of it all took Soul's breath away. And her eyes flicked from sight to sight, color to color, trying to drink it all in. And then we killed him and ate him. What? Sol asked, turning back to her brown a teammate. Now that got your attention. Evie smiled. You were just completely zoned out. Is something wrong? No, just look at it all. Sol gestured to their surroundings. Isn't it all just so wonderful? Uh, what? I mean, look at this. Sol walked off the path to a nearby tree and ran her fingers along the rough textured bark. It's all so alive. It's just a tree, Sol. They're everywhere. And that makes them any less great? Sol snapped a small branch off the tree and returned to the road. She held up the dark brown branch with its wide green leaves, then snapped it to the side, revealing the luminous blue sky behind it. Snap green, snap blue. You're really weird sometimes. No, I'm weird all the time. You just don't notice. Sol informed him with a grin. They kept walking with Sol's attention focused on the branch she held above her head, craning her neck to see it. Snap green, snap blue. Why does it feel like I haven't seen colors in a long time? Can I ask you a question, Sol? Why didn't you read the job request earlier? Snap green, snap blue. Sol? Snap green? I couldn't read it. She answered quietly. What do you mean? Snap blue. I looked at it, but the writing didn't make any sense to me. Maybe it's because of my amnesia. Or maybe I have always used a different form of writing. Or maybe I'm simply illiterate. I don't know. Soul braced herself for the condemnation, the judgment she was sure was coming. Snap green. If you want, I could teach you later. Soul looked down to Evie and saw no judgment in his features, just a friend offering to help. And Soul immediately felt guilty for thinking so little of him. That sounds great. Soul dropped the branch, and they quietly stood together on the path. Well, this is unbelievably awkward. Soul looked around for anything to break the silence. So what else do you keep in that man purse of yours? It's a satchel! Soul laughed and began walking. A rose by any other name is still a man purse. Satchel! Evie insisted with a hint of a smile 